<laughs> what are you going to get in Botswana? It seems like there's some muti you, you're going to get in Botswana. <laughs> well, it, listen, if we do come across some, we'll definitely take it. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of uh, Let's Talk Cycling with Almost Elite. We're back and uh, we took a little bit of a production break, but uh, we're back. And it was so great to see some of you out there and riding with you guys. Um, Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Uh, Today we're crossing borders. Uh, We're talking to Davis Muhambi. Um, Yeah, so he's all the way from, from Zim and... Actually, Davis reached out to me on Strava, um, and, and I think that's that's how we, we connected and we've been talking since, and he's, he's doing amazing things, um, which we'll talk about that in, in, in this episode. So Davis, welcome to the, to, to the show, and uh, just give a brief intro about yourself and, and, and your team, man. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, like you mentioned, my name is Davis Mohambi. I am from Zimbabwe, and I am the owner of um, a team which is a development project, a youth development project, a youth empowerment project, uh, and we go by the name of Unimills Hokoyo. Uh, Unimills is, 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 is a company that I own which is uh, into food production. Yeah. Um, and Hokoyo means watch out. So <laughs> it's, it's an expression of, 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 of when someone wants to say watch out, they can say Hokoyo. Hokoyo means watch out. So I, well, I just thought the two would blend very well because, you know, cyclists are chasing each other. Yes. So, <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, and what we are is we are a team. So, we started off as a team and, and not a club, they say. Yes. Um, the distinction there being a club rides and a team races. Mm. So, we focus more on on, 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 on on racing. And how we started was um, 20, in 2020 when COVID started. Mm. Um, I'd always been wanting to go to the gym. And every time I, I tried to go to the gym, I think my cardio would always let me down. Obviously, the weights <laughs> were tough on their own, but then you know the punting wouldn't help. You know, just very d- 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 uh, um, discouraging to trying to catch my breath. So I thought, no, maybe because in, in high school I, I used to be an athlete. I used to be a sprinter, and um, I thought maybe let me try and 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 run. So that maybe I can, you know, get my my cardio to to speed, so that then I can go to the gym. Not that I'm a big gym f- fanatic, but you know, uh, age is catching up with me, and I just thought, you know, maybe it's a midnight uh, midlife crisis. So I, I really wanted to do something about uh, my exercise regime. So I started running uh, when COVID started. When the first lockdown came, I obviously knew I had so much time at home. I was not too sure how long this. Was going to last but one thing i knew was that i was going to be at home so i then decided what i'll do is i'll run so i started running in the yard you know and then i realized i was not a long distance kind of guy so i decided no but i used to like cycling when i was growing up so i then bought myself a mountain bike with my little brother who i live with then we started uh riding so when we we're running we ended up doing about 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 seven k's a day and then when we started cycling we were doing about 22 Ks or so, which was a, a leg around uh, the city from my house. So it's, it was a lap that we're doing. And then it so happened that one day, because I also do practical shooting, IPSC, um, I was at the range and I was talking to one of my friends. He's, he's not the slimmest of guys. Um, and I was bragging about how I was doing about 23 Ks on a mountain bike. Do you know what I mean? And then he was like to me, what? 23 Ks, you know, we're doing more than that. And I was looking at him, I'm saying, you doing more than that, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, so I'm on a road bike and I'm doing, and I'm doing 60 odd. I'm like, what? So I didn't believe him. And then he showed me Strava. That's how he introduced me. That's how I got introduced to Strava. So he then showed me his stats on Strava. I did this thing, I was downloading Strava. And within a couple of days, I'd gone online. I'd asked a few questions about the, the, the guidelines of buying a road bike. And then I bought a road bike. And then so happens that there are two communities in Zimbabwe. Well, in Zimbabwe, where I live in, in, in Blue Air, there are communities that do r- road biking. Um, and the issue is you never get to see them because they ride early in the morning. And I was never an early person. So I never knew these communities existed. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But by the time I got up, they would be long gone. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like ghosts. So like I, I, I never knew they existed. So I was introduced to these guys. Then I started riding with them. And then, you know, I realized I, I actually had a passion for cycling when I was growing up, but never got exposure to the racing side of it or the training side of it. So I used to cycle everywhere. I used to guys to prefer cycling than using a car where, where, where possible. Um, so I started cycling uh, with, with these communities. And then slowly, slowly, I then realized there was a community which I'd taken note of years earlier, which was a community of riders, but they seemed to come from underprivileged backgrounds. Yeah. So I, I took note of them, but I really used to question because I used to see the kits that I had on, but they were quite worn out. Worn out. The bikes that were sort of like recent from my understanding at the time. And so I used to wonder what was happening, but never bothered to ask. So when I started getting interested in cycling individually, uh, I started doing more and more long rides alone. You're trying to catch up with the other guys that I was riding with to make sure when I go for those group rides, at least, you know, I'm not dropped. You keep up, yeah. So I started training on my own, you know, riding on my own. And in fact, with my little brother. Then we used to meet these boys, you know what I mean? So one of the times I, I then stopped to one of the guys and I had a conversation with him. His name is Andrew. And I asked him, listen, uh, what do you, do you guys actually cycle professionally? What do you? And then he gave me, his, he told me his story. But what I realized was that obviously uh, with the little that I knew at that time, having purchased equipment, I knew there were barriers uh, in terms of cost. Do you know what I mean? Um, I knew obviously from the little research that I did that there was... Uh, huge equipment costs in terms of cycling. Even the training regime requires a diet. You know, guys are sitting on a bike for hours, and so you need the energy and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So as we as 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 we discussed, that's when they exposed me to their challenges. But I, at that time, I sort of like took lightly the talent that they had. So we used to go for like um, certain crit races, and some of the guys that I, I was riding with obviously had. You know, some of the most recent bikes, you know, what I mean, 2020 models, 2019 models and whatever. And then when we used to do these quick races, you know, we would obviously get dropped. You know, we were we were, we were new riders at that time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then one of the quick races, one of these boys rocked up with a, with a with an old track bike. In fact, I've got it outside here uh, because I took it and swapped it later on. So he was riding the very track which um, Lance Armstrong was riding back in the day. Yeah, the one that changes on the frame, I think, eh? Yeah, it, the one with yeah. the US Postal, the US Postal one. Yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? Um, so he came there with his antiquated equipment, and I thought, ah, he, he stands no chance. Do you know what I mean? But boy, did he drop all of us. <laughs> he did rounds on all of us. So, so I was really touched. And then after that, I just said to him, listen, you know, I've always wanted to be involved in some empowerment initiative for the youth. Yeah. But I always used to find doing it through business, right? Uh, and it's not like I've got a passion for business. I'm, I'm into business. It's not like I've got a passion for business. But business for me is almost like a mode of survival. Uh, it's a discipline. Do you know what I mean? So I realized probably trying to empower people through something that I'm not really passionate about. Do you know what I mean? It would not be the right thing because others I'll be working. Literally yeah. working, you know what I mean? So I, I then said, listen, you know, I've, I've, I, I think I've got a passion for cycling and I see what you guys do and I, and I think I can help out. So that's how we then started. So what he then did was when he was riding in South Africa at some stage, he was being coached by Bosal Bosov. So Bosal Bosov is, a, is involved, he was involved, he's a, he's a, he's a South African national. I think he was uh, one of your national team managers. He's um, trained and managed a couple of elite riders in South Africa, professional riders. Um, and he then said, listen, why don't you talk to Bosau? Uh, and Bosau owns In Infinite Academy, right? And then, but now currently he's based in, uh, in Europe. He's part of um, EF Education, oh. the development side of uh, EF Education that's yeah. on the world tour. So then I spoke to Bosau and I said, listen, yeah, you know, I, I, it's, it's it's not like I've got deep pockets, but I think I can do something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, that conversation began and then the flame was ignited. And yeah. then uh, a couple of months later, we put together a group of about eight eight guys. Most, In fact, so my, my thrust was underprivileged riders. 
and my and and, and one of the objective or, or objectives of the of the team is that we want to empower these youth that we want them to make a living out of uh, their talent it's not easy because everything in, in cycling obviously is about sponsorship yeah. and at times the issue of sponsorship is not sustainable so it's something that that, that we'll discuss a bit later what we're then trying to do so that's how we started and then uh, I, and then we and then Bosao said listen I can give you training programs that you need to do so that's how we got hooked onto training peaks which is our platform for for receiving our our, our, our weekly training schedules um I, I i i ran around looked for some money and then you know i started changing some of their bikes getting them better bikes then got the bike computers got the power meters uh, um and then you know we started get, get, getting involved in local races and it, you know from from the first race you know where we were we were we were we were, we were taking all the posts I mean, on 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 the podium. So the the, the year went by, um, uh, yeah, and we you know we won the national championships. We won all the races in in 2021. In fact, all of the the cycling finish in Zimbabwe is, is currently yeah. here in my house. In my, in my house with me. Um, <laughs> you've got a gold mine in, in there in your house, eh? Sorry, you've got a gold mine in your house. Yeah, well, there is. Well, I, 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 I really wish at some point they were really plated with real gold. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, man. But then, so, yeah. So, so yeah. So I just want to maybe you know understand understand your team dynamics. You say you've got about eight riders. Can you just run us through some of some of your riders and perhaps you know one or two things in terms of their strengths? Right. So, so as, as you'd appreciate, you know, our our, our terrain in, in Zimbabwe is pretty flat. You know what I mean, we so 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 we we we've got uh, um, Andrew himself, right? Who was captain last year, and then this year we, we changed our captain. He is basically a, a time trial specialist, so he's the current national time trial uh, champion. Um, and we have got um, we also have um, Kulumo Dube. Uh, Kulumo Dube is he's 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 very strong. Um, on, on longer distances, you know, when we do those sort of, you know, 140, 160K, you know what I mean? Um, he warms up qu- quite late, but when he does, he really comes to the party. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, he's an engine. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's like an, 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 an old sort of engine, you know what I mean? But <laughs> it warms up late, you know, it needs some chalk start and stuff. But then, you know, um, and then we've got Mtoko. Um, Mtoko is is he is very strong on on medium distance. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously here in Zim, when we do our races, most of our races are 120 to 160 k uh, rides. You know, um, um, and then I've we, I've got um, um, of course I've got the under 23 champion. His name is um, is Liz 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 uh, Sibanda. In fact, Lizwe, he this year he attended two of the UCI training camps in Pal uh, in February and in, in May, um, and he's basically uh, a um, all-round kind of a, a, a rider. Um, I, I must also add that um, Andrew and 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 Mtoko are, are, are very strong climbers. Okay. Oh, that's lovely, man. That's great stuff. Um, so I wanted to find out. Uh, so the races that you do in Zim, as you said, they're they're mostly flat and it's mostly crit races. Do have you guys had the opportunity of racing outside of Zim, like maybe some races uh down here in, in SA? Right. So 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 last year we participated in uh, the, the 94.7 wow. race. Cool. Yeah. And um, our strongest rider, they finished, I think, 39 or 40. Um, that's I think that's he was impressive. A second eh? behind, yeah, he was a second behind, um, is it um, Gibbon? Uh, yeah, Ryan Gibbons. Um, R- Ryan Gibbons, who rides for UAE. UAE. Yes, yes, yes. Yo. Wow, that's yes. very impressive. Um, that's very impressive. Yeah. 
um, at that time, um, at that time, our strongest rider, in fact, two days before the race, we were involved in a serious accident in, in, in Joburg. So, so some of my guys were, were a bit shaken, including the, the guy who was at the time the, our main rider, his name is Advocate Peel. Um, he was very shaken. He didn't do well at all. Um, he failed to recover properly from, 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 from that accident. Um, but however, Andrew came to the party and he finished, I think, uh, was it 39th or 40th? Uh, behind uh, um, the guy from uh, UAE Emirates. Uh, and as a team, I think, I think four of our riders finished in the top 100. Um, and then I think we were, we were ranked the fifth best team uh, of the top of, 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 of the event. Mm. So, so wow. I think, that's so I think that's the, that's the only event that we did outside Zimbabwe. Uh, you know, races last year were a, 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 few, were a few, obviously, because mm. the beginning of the year, the, you know, yeah. the lockdowns were still in effect. But obviously, as we came to the close of the year, uh, there were more openings of, of races. But also, you know, as a team, we're still, you know, I'm, I'm new to cycling myself. You know what I mean, so I'm, I'm learning a lot. You know, um, the administration side of, 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 of the team. In fact, I, I, I think things took off much quicker than, than I expected. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So to come up with the calendar, uh, the issue of budgets, you obviously know it's, 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 it's very yes. expensive. Um, so this is why th this year, you know, when we introduced the new training regime, where we basically linked their remuneration per month to their training effort, because we can measure that, you know, using uh, um, using their in in intensity factor, yeah. um, their TSS, you know what I mean? So we, 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 we use that as a weighted average for the That's basket of remuneration that we give them to determine what each gets so that we keep them training, training hard, so that they 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 earn what they actually deserve and what they work for. This is part of the spirit that we're trying to inculcate into them, that you obviously have to uh, earn, um, uh, you have to earn that which you've, you've earned, you know, so, 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 and, and then we, we also have a, a new rider, he's a 15 year old guy, but very strong, my guy. Very strong. Very strong. Um, on, 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 we had a race earlier on this year, uh, the 100 miler. He, he did the 80 kilometer distance uh, against some elites and whatever, and he finished uh, third. And this guy is 15 years old. Yeah, for 15 you know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, out of a pool of about, uh, about 80 riders. Yeah. You know I mean? So he's strong. Uh, in fact, I'll be bringing him to SA. To challenge some of you guys. <laughs> he must come. Oh, you must. How does he must. <laughs> it looks like you don't have competition in there, so um, he, he might as well come to it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Listen, you know, Davis. competition, to be honest, yeah, the competition was um, cycling here in Zim, uh, in the road racing, had almost died. You know, um, when we came, Okoyo, in 2020, at the same time and simultaneously, I mean, coincidentally, um, there were other teams in Harare that emerged as well. You know, so we've got a team, uh, uh, Chaira, uh, which is run by a friend of mine, Cosby. Um, and we also have uh, an, 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 another group of riders, they're called uh, Chofa. You know, so, so Chaira means sweep, do you know what I mean? Um, and then uh, Chofa means ride, you know, so... So, so, so the, the interest is growing uh, and, and hopefully uh, we will get um, better competition as, 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 as new clubs come up. But now we are trying to focus on Botswana, like in the next month, we'll be going to Botswana. So we want to first go to Botswana before we really focus on South Africa, <laughs> obviously, you know. <laughs> what are you going to get in Botswana? It seems like there's some muti you, you're going to get in Botswana. <laughs> Well, listen, if we do come across some, we'll definitely take it. But, <laughs> but, but obviously, you know, the, the, the cycling culture in South Africa is, is, is much better. You know, yeah. we actually rely on South Africa for even our own um, supplies. Even the bikes that you see behind me, they all came from South Africa. You know, we're always on, on Bike Hub. 
uh, Cycle Lab and all of that, you know, looking for our, our supplies, you know, so, so, and, 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 and every time that I've been there, you know, I've got cousins who, who started cycling because I do now. Um, and yeah, they, they, they tell me stories about huge groupings. I mean, groupings that we don't even know of in, in, in Zimbabwe, you yes. know. No, man, look, I, I love what you're doing with the team and especially developing young riders, you know, because I, I strongly believe that's where the potential lies. I mean, you know, the Pogacas of today, they probably started cycling at age 10. Um, and, you know, you are grooming 15-year-olds to become the next Pogacha, right? Um, so, I mean, you know, we're speaking a bit offline about, you know, some of some of the, the races you've done and, and specifically in Egypt. So can you tell us a bit more about the, you know that project of of uh, of riding for for continental championships? So obviously because we uh, in our team we had um, the elite time trial and row champions and we also had the under twenty three champion who was the time trial and road um, um, champion. So um, the, the the UCI through the center in Park right they come up with um training camps w- once so often and obviously they then communicate with our national federation which is cycling zimbabwe to find candidates who can make it uh for those camps and usually uh it's it's those national champions that take um first uh, preference so um having those in our team m- 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 puts us in a very good position to access these um opportunities um so so we sent um, Lizwe there, uh, who is the under-23 national champion, uh, in February. And then after that, that's when there was the um, uh, continental championships in road continental championships in, in, in Egypt. And then as a follow-through of that camp, he then went to, to, to Egypt. But unfortunately, he didn't finish the race uh, based on, on, on a technicality. I think he had a puncher. Right, and the team that I traveled there, unfortunately, I think there was something to do with the spares, spare rim, and spare tire. So he lost a lot of time trying to trying to fix that, and then unfortunately he had to they had to ask him to stop. Um, so he didn't finish that race. But you see, these are some of the challenges that we are yet to also deal with at a national level. So I mean, mm-hmm. how our federation here is run in regards to uh, road racing because. Others, the efforts that we're doing at club level will come to naught, you know, if there isn't um, the meeting of ends with uh, the efforts from our, um, our, 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 our national uh, association. So, so mm. things are starting to improve slowly, but obviously funding is a, is a big hindrance. When these guys travel there, we have to fund them, like personally, mm. you, know, um, you know, which makes it uh, a huge challenge. You know to, to to access those platforms. So, but you know, I, I I think when you when you go through these challenges, you also yeah. then come up with ideas of mm-hmm. how to better yourselves. You know, and one of the ideas which um we, you know we you and I we 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 shall be discussing is how we as uh, development teams, what can we do for each other and for uh, you know and together. Do you know I mean to better ourselves? Do you know I mean we 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 need to look at ourselves as 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 people with the same interests, same challenges, and then how can we overcome them together? You know, and how can we better ourselves? Maybe we should come up with a league. Do you know what I mean um, which involves teams in Botswana, teams in Zimbabwe, teams development teams. Do you know what I mean, and by the mm-hmm. time we go to you know big stages like the ninety four point seven or the, the the Cape Cycle Tour and whatever. We are better prepared because we've got better expo- exposure. Mm-hmm. But some of the things we can never really get experience, you know, like uh, peloton riding. Yeah. You're riding in a peloton. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you cannot simulate that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You need the experience. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think we need to come up with the races that better ourselves. We need to come up with even a federation of um, developing teams in Southern Africa. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and see how we can pull the strings together, you know, and 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 knit it together so that it it betters us. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, so David, so, so I wanted to find out. You know, I mean, it's 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 obviously 
very different when you're running a a club you know and especially to to your point like a pro club versus you know just a normal meetup or coffee right sort of kind of social club right there's uh, a, a, and you're developing sort of young people right so how how do you get that right in terms of taking youth so you, you take someone who's young right and they obviously want to be young they want to enjoy life they they they're not obviously seeing life in that serious lens um as to Eugene's point they're not seeing themselves as a pogachas yet so how do you change that mindset from a young person and sort of put that mindset of of you know of of a winner and and even though certain things are not accessible like you're saying resources are a challenge but how do you sort of get a team of eight people you know it's, it's tough enough to get two three people to be serious and committed how do you take eight people and get them to be focused and committed and and see sort of the bigger vision of where you're trying to go so obviously because the the resources are limited you know we obviously have to come up with a criteria to begin with so i mean where most of the sieving actually happens so i mean so we can only pick the best out of that sieve so i mean so um 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 i must say that process allows us to pick those that are already determined you know um for for example you know if you go out there and then you say who wants to come and ride with us do you mean listen there'll be a million hands i mean especially we 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 get some of these guys from the cycling groups that are already there do you mean so like i said these uh, cycling communities they ride but there's some guys who are, who are there who you see have got the potential who actually have the the will and desire do you mean um those are the guys that we then bring on board um so but obviously that requires a lot of um financial assistance which um you know we are really working on which is enough for uh, business um um networks so um there's a friend of mine his name is um is Edward Kwekwete. So so Edward and I were in high school together. Do you know what I mean? Um he's now based in the Cayman Islands. So Edward cycles in the Cayman Islands. He's a you know, one of these um um uh, o- o- audit firms. So he's doing quite well there. Um and then when he realized this is what I was doing, you know, he got hold of me and said, "Ah, because we we had linked on 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 Garmin Connect because I've got his contacts." So when 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 I went on Garmin Connect we were connected and then i could see that he was riding you would see that i was riding then we we started chatting on app because there's a there's a group uh a whatsapp group for all the guys who were in the same class were, when we were back in school so we just used to chat there by general stuff but when we realized that we were, we were both cycling we started talking and then when we, and that conversation then led to the project that i was doing which is unimos okoy so he then came to me and said listen i i like what you're doing I, th- I think it's a great initiative given you know the um, the economic situation in our country uh, the high uh, unemployment rates do you know I mean and 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 he said listen how can i chip in uh, and i told him listen these are our budget lines uh, wherever you can chip in you know uh, we can't choose but we will be very very grateful for whatever you can yeah so he then came in and then he started um, he's been uh, taking care of our supplement budget right um which which is you know uh so the supplement the certain supplements that we take obviously the your recovery drink uh your your creatine your glutamine for 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 your recovery uh your gels on 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 races and things like that so he provides um for 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 that budget then i also have a friend because um like i said unimills is into uh food supply so they obviously guys who i supply and then when we're negotiating discounts and uh, you know i throw in my boys and say you know what you can get a discount if you can come yeah. through on this one do you know what i mean so <laughs> <laughs> so we got green supermarkets which is a chain of supermarkets here a friend of mine tom who, who owns it uh, he's also come through uh, he gives us a certain amount of money per, per month a fixed amount of money and he's pledged to do that for for a year um i also have a, a, my brother who owns a construction company in 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 Harare uh, uh Brodave construction he's also come through you know we've also had guys who are well wishes there's a guy uh, his name is um 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 uh, Denzel Bana he's based in in the UK so we always used to ask for his trailer 
you know, I mean, when we're going for races, boys, he's got a, a trailer that carries five bikes and whatever. Yeah. And then one of the times when I went to collect it, the guy then handed me a, a rage book. And I'm like, uh, we don't need the rage book. We are, we are in country. You know what I mean? And then he says, no, no, Mr. Banner said that you, you, you don't have to bring it back. You know what I mean? Go and change the registration wow. for yourself and whatever. So, you know, all of these things, um, they all work together. And they then, you see, that, that positive energy that we get also draws in uh, positive uh, people and, and riders because obviously people know the standard of training that we do, the commitment that the boys have, which they've already set. So it makes it easy for, for the guys to come. But maybe to, to answer your question more specifically, right? Um, we are still working on that. I, 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 I don't want to lie and pretend like I've got a formula. Right, yeah. but I think we will learn more of that, and we will get more experience of that, because we are now starting a school development program. Lovely, right? Yeah, which is um, uh, uh, for uh, we're going, obviously going to start with um, with uh, private schools, right? But that program is designed um, to run in a controlled environment, obviously because of the ra- has, uh, uh, hazards on the road right uh, the safety concerns that the parents have so what we've done is we've uh, broken down the training sessions into two um there's uh, mainly uh, a a indoor session which is which, which happens obviously in a controlled environment which way we have the opportunity to impart skills and, and knowledge about cycling right um and then we have recently joined our motorsport association they have got a racetrack here in blue Air, right um, and that's where we'll be doing our outdoor riding. Yeah. Right? So we'll be doing laps and stuff there. Um, okay, thanks, Davis. Uh, all right, I think, you know, one last question uh, before we close. Um, you know, what is your message to the companies out there who, who, who may consider supporting or sponsoring a team um, in cycling? Because, I mean, you know, you've, you spoke about a few of your friends that you've linked up with who've who've gracefully, you know, given their time, resources and energy into a cycling team. So what would your message be to a company out there who's looking to to sponsor teams? Because obviously we know that um, it needs it because cycling is very expensive. Um, and there's a lot of talented, underdeveloped kids out there that probably need the funding in order to, to, uh, to take it to the next level. Well... Obviously, um, we, 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 when you're talking to, to companies, they obviously need to understand what's in it for them, naturally. I mean, which is obviously the most difficult part. But I think, you know, as we develop cycling, um, we are trying to get those executives into cycling. Um, the issue is, we ha- um, we, you know, most people when they are executives of companies, they are people of age. Do you know what I mean? Um, and cycling has got a direct benefit to that. I mean, um, I see some of the older riders that we ride with. I mean, they're guys who are diabetics, who are no longer on insulin, but are still diabetics. You know what I mean? And 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 both cycling has got that benefit. Um, but you know, it's um, for for companies if they have got a social responsibility program. I mean, I think cycling uh, offers uh, um, a lot of good in that re- um, regard. You know, it's 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 obviously um, a green sport. You know, what I mean, uh, there's no emissions. You know, what I mean, um, it's a sport that um, um, has the potential. You know, to to rope in a, a lot of the youth who are, you know, uh, confronting a lot of challenges in society. You know, what I mean, um, and there are the health and social benefits that come with that. So, 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 you know, businesses. Should, should support this in, in, in initiative, especially in Africa. I think we, we, we have a challenge which has always been there because when you look at, at, at cycling in the world, it's basically a European sport. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and we need to also come there and, and, and take this challenge head on and say, you know, you know and answer the, 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 the question, why is it that we, we dominate when it comes to other endurance sports? You know, when it comes to to long distance running, yeah. you, know I mean? you speak of definitely, athletes. definitely. But all of a sudden, when it comes to cycling, yeah, how different is it? It's an endurance sport. <laughs> exactly, that's, that's the way to look at it. We so should be that, You know, so Africa, 
um, Europe has got it right because it's a it's a it's a sponsorship sport. So we need to take this challenge because in Europe it, it's it's the corporate and the sports side that come together. You know what I mean? So it's a challenge to the corporate world in Africa. Do you know what I mean? To step up and we should take this challenge to Europe. Do you know what I mean? Uh, apparently Europe is 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 the world of cycling because when they speak of the world tour, it's not like they travel across continents. Uh, you know, so the world in cycling apparently is Europe. It's, in Europe. it's a very small world. A small world. <laughs> so we need to change that narrative. Do you know what I mean? You can't be yeah. saying, yeah, there's a world tour and that tour is in, is in Europe. No, no, that's a European tour. If you yeah. want a proper world tour, let's level the playing field. Let's give the opportunity to Africa to come there like what, you know, Bimiam Germe is doing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, certainly there's a lot of talent so, but it requires the, the, the support of, 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 of corporate Africa. And it begins in their own domains and spheres where they operate from to support the sport. And then when we come together, Africa will come together and then, you know, we can take on this challenge and on. No, no. Great stuff, man. Yo, that's such great stuff, eh? Really, really enjoyed this, hey? Like this yeah, was no, that really, was, this, this was a good discussion, uh, Davis. And really good discussion. Again, Really well done to you great. for for running, you know, Unimills Okoyo and and giving us a run for our money here in South Africa. We look forward to to seeing you here, and and racing alongside you and your boys. Um, yeah, so I think yeah. you know that's all that's all the time we have today for for this particular episode. Thank you guys for watching and thank you for for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll keep the content coming. Um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. And thank you very much for having me. Cheers.